Hi there, Paul Thompson here from Spitfire Audio. I'm very excited today to show you symphonic organ. The organ is the original synth, conceived by Tisibius of Alexandria in the 3rd century BC. As it developed through the centuries, it became able to reproduce the sound of strings, woodwinds and brass, the core of the symphonic orchestra, as the orchestra itself was developing. The organ is a solid staple of film music throughout the years. From its visual appearance in films like Phantom of the Opera in 1925, through to films as diverse as Herman's Vertigo, Richard Strauss in 2001, Wendy Carlos's Tron, Glass's Kionoscotzi, and of course, Hans Zimmer's Interstellar. Here we have something very special for you today, an immensely powerful cathedral-sized organ built into Rugby School Chapel, a smaller building than is usual for this size of instrument. Symphonic organ is the sound of the organ in your imagination that you've never been able to achieve, expertly recorded with multiple mic positions, curated by legendary session keyboardist Andy Richards and the resident organist James Williams. This is the instrument that Andy used on two of Tim Burton's seminal films, Sweeney Todd, which opens with the organ, and Frankenweenie. We've done all of the hard work on this one, so you can just open and play. Everything from beautifully soft lyricism to ear-shattering power. Let's dive straight in. So we're opening with all stops out. So this is literally everything on the organ sounding, all of the stops pulled out and the kind of full tilt sound. I'm going to show you with this the different mic positions, first of all. So when it opens up, we've got the close valve mics, the stereo mics, and then about half power, the ambient mics. That sounds like this. So let's break it down and go through every possible option here. So one of the things that we've recorded, which is really unusual, is the sound inside the organ box. Now, this is an incredibly cramped and claustrophobic space. Um, it's also surrounded by tons of really delicate machinery. So this is not a sound um, that anyone would usually hear, uh, but it's got a really interesting creative potential. Also, it's not a place you'd want to be with all the stops out. But that sounds like this. You can hear there we have the manuals, but we've also got the pedals on this patch. And this is a kind of common feature where the pedals are matched with the manuals. They appear on this kind of um, all-in-one patch on the keyboard so that you can play the full range of the organ. Let's check out the close valve mics on their own. Close ribbon mics. So really interesting and a very, very different sound. We've got an LCR, which has collapsed to a stereo pair. And here you can start to get the feel of the distance of the room. Our stereo stage mics. And finally, the ambient mics, the most distant mics at the back of the chapel. Mm -hmm. 
So with the, these different options, you can really go for um, many, many different types of sound. So for example, if we wanted to concentrate on the slightly more dissonant LCR, um, but have a little bit of those valve mics in and a little bit of the ambience. Conversely, we could go for the ribbons at full and the stereo mics at full. which is a much more intense sound, as you can hear. Let's go back to our original mix, and we'll check out some of the other sounds in the organ. So jumping right back down to the very bottom, so this is the softest, most gentle and beautiful sound that you can get on the organ. Now you'll see that this is also called swell. One of the things um, that an organ has is a, a mechanical um, system of shutters, which is called the swell box. And this enables you to use uh, part of the organ to have a kind of volume differential, a kind of dynamic control over it. And it sounds very different with the box shut. It takes a lot of the top end off and becomes more kind of muffled sounding to with the box open when it becomes much clearer. So let's check that out first of all. So you can hear there you've got beautiful settings for the pedal as well. So you've got the pedal board um, matched up to the sound up on the keyboards. Let's check out the next one up, stopped diapasons. Now diapasons are the term that's in organ language that means flute, basically. So it's a kind of wood pipe uh, that has a very kind of orchestral fluty sound. And as you can hear, it's got a really lovely opening kind of chiff sound. That's created by the air starting to go into the pipe. It creates that lovely kind of attack. So that's one of the core sounds of an organ is the diapason sound. It's that kind of, or the flute sound, that um, wooden, uh, fluty, orchestral, windy sound. As the organ developed through the centuries, because they were struggling with the amount of power, wind power, that they could pump into the instrument, they couldn't make it any louder. So one of the ways that they came up with making it seem louder and more impressive, and dare I say it, more frightening in a liturgical context, um, was to add a series of pipes that were very, very small and were tuned to be almost like a kind of harmonic series. But they're not tuned to the harmonic series. They can be uh, tuned to fifths and then maybe a fourth above that. There might be... Um, what's called the third mixture as well. And sometimes you get a lot of these added together. Here's an example of the mixtures um, which we've uh, created for you in symphonic organ. Now you wouldn't necessarily use that on its own, although it sounds great, as Andy told me last week, with um, some reverb and just set back and used as a kind of sequency thing. Sounds really lovely. And you can blend that back and it's almost like um, it takes us back to the original synth. It's it's kind of like that, that kind of uh, high synth part. But if you add this together with your wood kind of core sound, your diapasons, then you can hear there that we've taken the, the wood diapason sound, but we've made it sound uh, hugely more powerful and intense by adding these all of these kind of higher pitches to it. Moving up the kind of volume register, as it were, the power register, we have the great diapasons. So we had before stopped diapasons, which are capped pipes, but here we have the great diapasons, which are larger, more open sounding pipes. And again, you can add the mixtures onto this.
to get that more powerful sound. One of the things that um, really gives it that kind of amazing sound is the fact that these are all hand tuned and there's no kind of absolute they're, they're, they can be all over the place in organs and they're voiced by ear. And so you end up with something that has an, an amazing and beautiful inconsistency, by which I mean um, when you start to play complex chords, you get these incredible dense kind of clusters of sound. And that's the thing that gives that kind of almost horror sound to the organ and why it was, um, you know, in the 30s and 40s, it was uh, kind of seized upon as this fantastic thing that you could, you know, you could have the kind of... Um, the, the terrifying beast creature playing the organ uh, to give you an extra fright. It's because of this denseness of sound in the top frequencies. And it's also a reason why this kind of thing is incredibly difficult to reproduce um, in, a, in a kind of synth or anything like that because it's so uh, unpredictable and irregular. It's also the reason why we sampled every single semitone of this instrument because the pipes are all over the pipe boxes. So uh, from one semitone to the next, you're using different registers and ranks of pipes. They might be projecting more to one side than the other. And it's also what gives this instrument part of its kind of characteristic power and richness. So here we have um, what we've called horror strings. So it's got that wonderful kind of thin, um, slightly nasal quality. So um, and, and also you've got the swell control in there as well. So moving on, uh, Super Woolly Flutes Ensembles. British diapason is a slightly stronger diapason sound. So again, we're still in the kind of woody territory, but we're now getting a little bit more power. One of the things that evolved with the development of the organ was the ability to link the manuals or the keyboards together and also the keyboards to the pedals and vice versa. And this enabled a, an increase in the amount of power that could be produced, um, but also enabled you to create more colours because you can take... Uh, sounds that are traditionally part of, say, the choir or the swell keyboards or manuals, um, and those might be more kind of stringy or um, sounds that are, are called things like vox humana. It gives you an idea of, of what they're going to sound like. And you can blend those in with the slightly more straight and powerful sounds of, for example, the great keyboard or manual. So um, we've linked here together some of the different sounds in the different registers in the different manuals and you can hear how that increases the power of the sound. So it's not just that it's slightly louder, but it's slightly richer sound. It sounds slightly wider because you're using more of the actual organ box. So there's different sounds projecting from different angles. Here we've got the sounds that are very characteristic to the swell. The swell is so called because it was the first um, keyboard that had this kind of dynamic control. Uh, and so the idea was that the sound could swell. So I'll show you with the mod wheel. Here we've got a uh, flute sound again. It's, this is a much clearer sound. But it has a really beautiful texture. It has that really lovely kind of slightly raspy edge to it.
This one uh, named Woolly Hell. Um, again, these are different kind of textures and different blends of the different sounds. And it's really good to help you find exactly the right sound that mixes in with the rest of your track. And if you're putting these into orchestral tracks, you'll find that um, some sounds like to sit in front of the orchestra and some sounds really blend well as a kind of fourth section of the orchestra. Here we're into what organists call the reeds. Confusingly, this is actually a trumpet, um, but it gives you uh, that kind of, it does have a slightly nasal quality. So this would traditionally appear in a section of the organ called the solo section. And for obvious reasons, you would use it, you know, for your kind of that kind of solo type work. But it's a really great texture, especially played down low. And as you get higher, it almost takes on the character of part of the mixture sounds. And these sounds blend really well with the mixture. So I'm just going to show you that quickly before we move on. Of course, this organ being a cathedral sized organ has quite a few of these sounds. So here we are um, pulling together a lot of these sounds into one curated preset. And as you can hear, there we go right down into the pedals. But um, there are some incredible stops in the pedal section of this organ, which are quite rare as well. And those are called 32 foot stops. Um, now, the reason for this is because um, it's about the octaves of the keyboard. So when you have an eight foot stop, that's kind of how you would imagine just if you were playing on a piano. So it would sound at the same pitch. Then you have a four foot stop, which are smaller pipes, half the size, and those then play or sound rather an octave above. This is how you create the texture of the organ sound. So as you can imagine, these 32 foot pipes are enormous, but they also sound incredibly low and you can get below the range possible with the orchestra using these sounds. Some of them, in fact, um, you can't actually hear on a pair of Yamaha NS10s, for example, because they're below the frequency that can be reproduced on those speakers. So now we're into the kind of louder end of the spectrum. The full organ is a kind of curated preset that is how you would imagine uh, it's, it's not kind of stretching up to the to the real kind of full tilt, but it's that sound of a, a kind of powerful but steady sound of an organ. <laughs> So you can hear you've got the weight and the body of it and it still sounds great, but there's not there's not too much of those extra kind of mixtures and the and the um, brass stops to give it that full kind of welly. What we've called here full congregation is the idea of this is the kind of loudest that you would go if you were accompanying um, the congregation singing a hymn, for example. So that's got a kind of restrained power. So we've got some of those mixture sounds in. You can hear that kind of tinkly sound that's starting to come in, but it's kind of held back a bit. It's some of the quieter ones. Here we've got literally every possible reed on the organ. So every possible brass sound, all of those kind of really edgy, powerful sounds. <laughs> And when you play those kind of crunchy chords, you really hear there that kind of denseness of texture that grew from this kind of uh, 
evolution of the organ, especially as the romantic music started to be created in organ symphonies by people like Vienne and Vidor, um, you get this kind of development, especially in France, of this kind of very, very crunchy sound of the organ. Which takes us back... To all stops out. So what else is in here? We've Before we move on to the warps, which I'll come to, we've got the advanced folder, which separates up all of the sounds that you've got into separate manuals and pedals, again with all of the same mic positions. So here you've just got the same sound, but it goes all the way to the bottom of the manuals. Now if you take the same sound, but just played on the pedals, and as you'll remember, we have these uh, amazing interconnects um, between the pedals and the keyboards or the manuals, um, which enable you to link the two together. So you can get some duplication of sound here and the range can cross over. So at the top end of the pedals only patch. You've got that great sound of the, the pedals themselves, but also playing, pulling down some of the notes on the keyboards. And then when you go right down, you've got the amazing power of the pedals down the bottom there. So this gives you more control if you want to write something where the pedals are going all over the place, but you want to keep that separate from what your hands are doing on the manuals. We've got some great effects in here as well. So here, first up is the stop noise. So this is the noise when you change, uh, there are little buttons underneath each, each one of the manuals so that you can change things as you're playing, either on a section by section basis um, with your thumbs, or you can change the whole organ in one go. It's, it's incredibly programmable. And what happens when you push one of these buttons is that lots of the stops go in and lots of the stops come out. And that creates this amazing sound, which sounds like this. So here we've got a sound that was created actually at the organ, uh, multiple uh, octaves, lots of things happening. And you can hear that this gives you an incredibly intense sound. So again, an incredibly useful and easy to use building block for that full organ sound. Finally, we have the Boomer. So that's a bell at rugby school, um, which we've recorded. It's, it's colloquially known as the Boomer. Um, just an extra fun effect for you to use. You have the individual articulations in here as well, so you can load up a single patch uh, and use that on its own. But then we have these incredible warps, and these are presented in the eDNA engine. So I'm just gonna take you through a few of the snapshots in here. As you can hear, what we've done here is we've taken the organic sound of the organ and we've put it through a load of outboard processing, lots of different things, um, to create a whole new section of warped content. So if you look through here, there's tons and tons of great stuff in here for you to create your own patches. But let's flick through some of the snapshots. <laughs> So you get the idea. I'm going to jump through a few of my favourites.
I'll just stop that as it is a kind of infinite sound. So almost kind of crazy Mellotron type sound. So in addition to the main feast, the organ, you've also got this incredible organ synthesizer, um, taking it kind of one step further and really exploring what we can do with those with those incredible sounds. And again, any of those sounds with the mixtures in, even beyond the, the organ itself is an imprecise thing. So it's very, very hard to get it absolutely bang on in tune. It's just a part of the characteristic sound of the organ. But especially when you start adding in these mixtures uh, and even some of the reeds, you get this very, very dense, harmonically complex sound. When you start processing these with outboard effects, especially anything that has uh, any kind of harmonic distortion built into it, um, that will exacerbate this and give you some really, really complex sounds, things that you just can't get. You couldn't program this stuff into a synth. Um, it would just be way, way too complex. So that's, again, part of the beauty of using organic sounds and then manipulating them in this way to create these kind of almost synthesized sounding things. So going back to our main sound, the organ all stops out. Left a few notes out there because I can't use my feet at the same time. Anyway, you get the idea. This amazingly powerful cathedral sized organ in a small school chapel. Absolutely incredible. One of a kind instrument, which is why when Tim Burton heard it for the first time, he just had to have it. And they decided to open the film Sweeney Todd with just the sound of this incredible instrument. Now it's available to use for you. Um, all of these uh, very beautifully curated patches so that you don't have to learn how to play the organ to be able to use this sound in your tracks. So thanks very much for watching this brief introduction to Symphonic Organ. Check out the website. There's loads more information on there, other YouTube videos on our YouTube channel. And if you enjoyed hearing the warped content, which I just showed you, which has some incredible, fantastic sounds, check out some forthcoming videos, which will explain how we went through the processes of creating some of those sounds. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, ding that bell so that you get notifications, subscribe to the channel, and you'll hear all of the news coming from Spitfire as soon as it's posted. Thanks very much for watching. Look forward to seeing you on the next one.